Hello everybody, Gadget Boy here. Um, here with another video. I'm sorry they're so sporadic. Uh, hopefully, as things um, get more interesting at school, I'll have some more content to bring you guys. Uh, but for now, I bring them as I can. Um, so today, I'm here to show you this neat little uh, soldering iron that I picked up. Um, so. Of late, in my videos, the soldering iron I use um, is this thing. Uh, this is the base station for it. I'm going to pull it into camera here. It's a temperature-controlled soldering iron uh, with this great big huge uh, base station and a great big thing. Um, it is a very lovely soldering iron. Uh, got a nice broad tip on it that I really like. It's got a high thermal capacity so I can um, solder even when something has a like a heat sink or something attached to it but it is as you can see quite very bulky um, takes up a lot of room on my desk and uh, you know it, it can be a little uh, difficult to work around sometimes so well it's a very nice soldering iron I've never had any complaints about it whatsoever other than the fact that it's enormous. Um, I saw this cute little thing on Banggood uh, quite a while back. Um, let us go. Oh boy. Well, I'll fix that later. Um, it's called a TS100. And there it is. That's the entire soldering iron. Now, this is a really cool thing because. This soldering iron is temperature controlled. And it's all temperature controlled by this unit right here. That whole thing. There's the handle of my normal one, just for, you know, a bit of reference there. It's a little bit shorter, it's a lot more slender, and uh, it's a whole heck of a lot lighter. So let me show you how this thing works. Now, this doesn't come with its own power supply, so you have to find one. Um, and today, to show it off, I'll just be using a generic, well it's not actually a generic, um, it's a, actually a power supply for, for an old computer, but it provides 17 volts. Now this operates at anywhere from 12 to 24 volts, and they actually recommend 19 volts for it. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit closer here and uh, focus in there. That's a, a ground post. Oh, I shouldn't flip off the camera there. That's a ground post. Um, that's used uh, to ground the soldering iron. Probably if you're using a, a less than stellar power supply. Um, this one was used for a computer, so I imagine it's probably got pretty good uh, noise suppression built into the... Uh, the power supply itself so that you won't get any AC leakage up into the, the iron itself. And I'll be uh, testing that, uh, not in this video, but, but a little bit later. But let me show you what happens when you plug this in. Now on the back you'll see this has a 12-volt, uh, just one of these generic 12-volt DC jacks and a USB port. We'll get to what that USB port does a little bit later. So. I'm just going to plug this in now, and you'll see it pops up with Chris's iron there, oh, and uh, apparently I already turned it on, and you'll see there it's uh, counting up the heat there um, until it hits 300 degrees Celsius, which is uh, its default setting, uh, which is a pretty pretty normal setting for, for an iron. Now I can press and hold this button here, and we'll just say, let's say we only want to solder at 250 degrees. I'm actually going to try it at 250 a little bit later. And you can see a little icon there saying it's cooling down, and we're almost there to 250. And it hits 250, and then you see the, the little icon there says that the, uh, the heat is stable. Um, so I'm going to unplug this again and try not to poke any buttons as, as I uh, plug it in again. Um, so when you initially plug it in, you'll notice it says 
Chris's iron. And then it goes into the standby mode. Now, you can put a file on it via USB, just a little tiny um, GIF, and uh, or GIF, depending on who you talk to. Please, no vitriolic arguments in, in the comments about whether it's GIF or GIF. It's one or the other. I use GIF uh, for graphics interchange format. It starts with the G sound, so GIF. Um, anyway, you can, you can upload a little GIF, and there's a certain number of pixels. I probably should have written it down. And it's just black and white, so, so you put your pixels down however you want it, and then it displays that uh, for the startup. Otherwise, it just shows the... Uh, the logo of the company, which is th that little lightning bolt looking thing. And then it sits here in um, in the standby mode. Uh, now, I probably shouldn't do it because the tip is hot right now. You can see it's still at 158 degrees Celsius. But if you just press the sec second, well, first button, depending on where you look at it, I think they call this button B in the instructions. Um, if you press that button, uh, it goes into this temperature mode, which tells you what the, the heat of the tip is, which means you could, in a pinch, use it as a thermometer. Um, but if you then press both of these buttons when you're at room temperature, it calibrates the, uh, the temperature sensor. But we're not going to mess with that right now because I already t calibrated it. So we'll press and hold to go back into standby mode. Um, and then you press the top button here, and it begins to heat up. So we'll just set that down for a moment, and I'll get the focus back on the, the table, because I have to do that manually, because I haven't found a good app for it yet. If anybody has any suggestions, by all means, let me know what a good app to use is. Now one of the other things you can do with the USB port here um, one is you can upgrade the firmware on the soldering iron. Uh, it's all open source, so you can even write your own firmware for the soldering iron. And the other is that you can change uh, the soldering iron's temperature curves, uh, how many, in like the, the increments that it changes the temperature by. The default is 10 degrees, as you saw a few moments ago. Uh, but you can change that to any increment you want. Um, and uh, you can change its standby temperature because if I let it sit here for a while, it's gonna go into stand into a low power standby where the soldering iron cools down, um, and then it waits for you to pick it up. And it's actually got an accelerometer in it, so when you pick up the soldering iron, it knows, oh, I'm about to be used again, and it brings the heat back up. So I'm just going to. Uh, solder together a, a little thing here quickly that you'll you'll see in uh, another upcoming video. Um, this is just a little capacitive dropper circuit for a uh, LED light bulb that I'm going to be building. Um, so we're gonna give this a little try. Now I actually wanted to, I said I wanted to try this at uh, 250 degrees just to see. So we're gonna press that button and bring it down to 250. We'll get my solder ready going here. And we'll wait for the iron to cool down. I wonder if I can make it cool down faster by waiting. Ah, yeah, that actually worked really well. Okay, so let's see. We'll start with the diodes. They've got a fairly thick, um, fairly thick lead here, although this one actually has really massive leads, we'll, we'll solder that one a little bit later though, so uh, let's just stick this into the board, I didn't bend the leads quite tight enough, so I'll have to try a little harder on the next one, and uh, Let's see how well this solders. Okay, that solders um, not melting quite as readily as I'd like to see, so uh, let's uh, turn it up to 270 here. 
see what happens. Yeah, that's much better. So, then we're gonna take the tip of the soldering iron. That actually works rather nicely. Oh, that looks like that solder joint's still a little cold. There we go. So we'll just uh, turn this up, I think, another 10 degrees to 280, and that should be good. So I'll do a little bit more soldering here. Um, actually, before I go into time-lapse mode, uh, where are my diagonal cutters? Oh, where did they get off to? Yeah. There we go. Just gonna trim this off like so. Let's see how this big capacitor fares getting soldered in. Let's see, where do you belong? You belong over here. So we're gonna solder you right like this. Close to the board as I can get you. Yeah, there we go. Get the tip a bit. And. Oh. Well, this isn't the best tip for soldering when, when you have something that has a reasonably high thermal mass. Uh, the tip I have on that one is, is better. And you can actually buy other tips for this iron. Um, I'll order some of them in. Um, they'll take a geological epic to arrive from China, but uh, we'll get here eventually. Um, and I'll show... Well, I'll actually probably just order the one I like. There's no point in wasting money on any others. So, there we go. You can hear Katie in the background there, just sneeze. Bless you, Katie. Alrighty. So I'm going to go into time lapse here, put the rest of this together, and then give you some impressions on the way the soldering iron handles for uh, soldering projects. So I'll be back. In